Hi everyone and welcome back. We are going to tackle, I saw it on Pinterest, uh, week nine, episode nine. And today I am going to work on, if I can get this to work, a version of, well, uh, this Tim Holtz clipboard, which I believe may be by Tim Holtz because it has the T down here in the corner. Um, if I go to view, it just takes me to view, but it doesn't really take me to a source. But my guess is because this has this little Tim Holtz logo down here in the corner that it was done either by him or by one of his designers. So I am going to use this concept, but I am going to incorporate it into my project um, as a guest design team project for Lorna Taylor at Taylor May Journals. So, and I guess I better not close that or I'm not going to know what I'm doing here. Um, I have two kits from Lorna that I'm going to be using in my project. And they are gorgeous. I can't wait to get started on it. Um, the first one is this kit and it is the Calligrapher's Garden and it is gorgeous. The colors are gorgeous. The font is gorgeous and so I'm really excited to get started. And then the other kit that I'm going to use is this one which is a calligraphy kit. Um, that she has. I was trying to see if I had one that printed, had the name printed on it. This calligrapher's garden is just beautiful. I think it's just called calligraphy or something like that. I will link it in the box below the exact name of it, but you can find those at Taylor made journals on Etsy and I've just printed everything out um, to get started and I'll probably go back and reprint some stuff as well depending on how I use it but anyway so that's what we're going to be using um, for this kit I thought it was very spring like and I'm ready for spring I don't know about you guys, um, but I'm way over the cold weather. So, this is what we're going to do to adapt for my use, and I'll put a picture of the original, as, as always, in the at the end of the video, so you can see. This is a Tim Holtz clipboard. I do not know if these are available anymore, but they come with the clip on them. And you can remove the clip. It has this little screw, um, which is really his post, um, post and screw little attachers that hold the clip on so that you can remove it so that you can work on this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cover this. And I am going to use, I believe... What do I want to use? I had a couple picked out. I think that I want to use this one. Because you're not going to see a whole lot of it. Yeah, I think I'm going to use this one. So let's get this one trimmed down to use. I hope everybody's doing okay. I just jumped right into it today. I'm excited to try this project. 
I'm going to cut off the white first, and I know I'm going to have to cut more than that, but for right now, I'm just going to cut off the white and cut it down the center so it's easier to work with. I picked this one because, um, like I said, you're not going to see a lot of it, but I thought that if I put these dragonflies up at the top that they would look really cool. So I'm just kind of going to put a crease in this so I can see where I need to cut it off. See, I'm going to cut his head off. I don't want to do that. Let's see if I can get them both on there. I'm just running my my nail along the side of the clipboard just to kind of get me a score so I can see where to cut it off. Okay, this one I printed on both sides. Um, by accident, so this is kind of an extra, extra print. Let's get it cut close. I could have done this a lot more technical than what I'm doing it, I guess. actually filming this on a Monday, but it will not be posted until Tuesday, as usual. I'm still trying to fix my video from yesterday that has given me great difficulties. And I'm hoping to post it later this evening. It's a horrible video, I can tell you that, before I just was really tired yesterday, and I'm just not talking a lot. And of course, that may be a blessing for you guys. But I'm going to post it anyway because I said when I started this, you get the good and the bad. So I'll just warn you ahead of time. Well, actually, this I'll be telling you afterwards. So I guess I should apologize rather than warn you ahead of time. I should apologize for how bad the video is. Alright, so to put this down, I believe that I am going to, what do I want to use? Hmm, my choices. I think I'm going to use Fabri-Tac. Just because I'm not familiar with, um, the reason I'm using this is I was trying to think of something that was just not a typical book cover um, for this project because these papers are so pretty and I thought this would be interesting to use this piece, this clipboard, as the front of a book cover. And so, what will happen is, I will make this as the cover, and then I will actually construct the rest of the book. And, um, go from there. So, that's my plan, anyway. That is the plan. All right, we'll squish this out so we don't get any little bumpies. I don't think we will, but we'll do it just to be sure. Oh, and I meant to grab 
actually, I have it. I'm going to edge this, I think, with black soot because I think it will look better. And look, I got glue leakage. Glue leakage. And then just to be sure that I have a good, nice edge, I'm going to grab my sandpaper. And just kind of sand around the edges. On something this thick, this is actually me the preferred way of making sure my edges are all nice and clean nice with the piece well all right so there's that get my dust out of the way and let's take black soot and go around the edges and I'm hoping that not only will it catch the edge of the paper but it will change the edge or the color of the board at first I thought this may be too thick um, for a book cover but really it's not any thicker than what I've you know, a decent book cover is. It's probably a little more rigid, but it's definitely not any thicker. So I think it's actually gonna work out really well. And that, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that actually did a pretty good job of covering that. Okay, and then we also want to go ahead and do this side because once we put those back in, we want that side to be covered as well. So for that side, I think I'll do the other side from the um, piece that we used. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just kind of go around it and make a crease so I can see where to cut it. You can do this with a bone folder or whatever. My nail's just attached to my hand tool, so it makes it easier. or anything that's gonna mess up. Believe it or not, before I started junk journaling, my nails were done all the time. But now, not so much. Because I'm continuously scrubbing ink or glue or something off of them. Okay. Beautiful dragonfly, isn't it? I just love this paper. It's gorgeous. Good job, Lorna. I'm loving it. Alright, before I do that, I'm going to poke these holes so that I know where they are before I cover up the back side too. I'm just going to use my pokey toe tool and kind of put a hole. Alright, then I can do it from the other side once I get this side covered and we'll be good.
Okay. This one down. And I will be filming as much of this journal as I can. And then, of course, I'll do a flip through at the end. All right, again, let's go around with the flex hook. This time I'm just worried about the paper because I already got the edges, so just kind of get some color on the paper. I'm kind of excited to use something besides Vintage Photo or Walnut State, too. But I think black in this case, or black soot, because it is more of a gray black, is better suited. And I'm going to do the same thing and poke the holes so we know where they are. Alright, so our next piece is going to be a tag. If you can see in this, I wish I could get... There we go. So we have a tag that is upside down that will go... Got a tag blank over here. Something like this. So see, all you're gonna see is, like that'll be up under the clip. So all you're gonna see is just a little bit of a border of this paper. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna use a blank because I'm gonna kinda collage a tag. So I'm gonna take this little reinforcer off um, and then I'll put one back on it when I'm done. And I'm going to use, this is one of the postcards off out of the kit. And I think that I'm going to use this one with a mushroom to start with. Because the reason I'm going to do um, a collage type tag is because the tag is on there upside down. And so, you have to kind of um, watch what you're doing as far as the print goes, or you have to do something that's going to look okay whichever way you go. So, I think that if I use one of these um, collage or the calligraphy pages... Where are they? Where are you? Here you are. And kind of use some of these different um, fonts on here and do kind of a collage type thing. And then put the postcard on, you know, like this. Um, that will be okay. I'm going to have to trim that down just a tad. Since <clears throat> we're going to be upside down with it. So, if I do... I'm staying in frame here. I moved my camera. Not intentionally, but. I did move it, and I hope I got it back to where it needs to be. Alright, so. Let me get my glue book. <clears throat> Oops. 
Oops. And I'm just gonna wrap this around the edges and then cut it at the top because the back's not gonna show, so it's not gonna matter. And actually, no, it's gonna have to be glued down. I sort of say you could make it to where it did show, but I think it's gonna have to be glued down in order to work correctly. Let's put that hole back in there. And let's do, do I have my, yeah, let's do a different color. What do I have over here? Let's use this and do... like that idea. I'm going to use our glitter on that. And of course, I mean our glitter glue. For those of you not familiar, it's not, it doesn't have any glitter in it or anything. They just, it's just named our glitter glue. Our glitter glue. All right. So now, let me trim that edge. How did I miss that one? If we do our postcard like this. Do I want to? I think I want to tear around this a little bit so it's not so regular. Just kind of, kind of fussy cat with my. Uh oh, I'm hitting my. Hitting my iPad. this way. Alright, so we need a little something right there. And now that I have my basic shape, I'm just going to start filling it in with whatever I need. Oop! Just put glue on the wrong side. Whatever I need to fill the tag up, and I'm not going to worry about what direction I go because I don't want, other than this part, I don't really want a direction. Big long piece. And I'll trim this 
once I get it off. Whoops, let's move that up. I'm full of oopses today, aren't I? All right, and then let's do some numbers. piece. You notice I did not ink um, any of those pieces because I don't want them to um, be separated from each other. I want it to look like one, one deal. I really didn't need to put that on the side, but that's okay. I'm not hurting anything. Get out my corners good. So there's our tag part. Get all these little scrappies out of the way. I keep my bigger scrappies for the rest of the project. All right, now let's go around this one with the black soot. And get back to my original picture here. I may have gotten those clipboards from Tuesday morning. So like I said, I'm not sure if they are available anymore, but you may be able to find somebody that, you know, still has some in stock. I think it was during the summer when I got mine. So I'm looking for my little, I keep this little, Thing that I use for my pastels because they're great for getting down in those holes and inking down in inside those holes. All right, so there's that, and I'm really liking the black soot with this paper. I know I've said that once already, but to reiterate. All right, so I need to sand that too. Let's sand this other side real quick. I'm gonna pull it off the table so it doesn't get the dust on the table. But basically what I'm doing is just the same thing I did on the other side. I'm taking that back side and uh, sanding the edges so that the paper's not hanging over and it's got a nice, clean, smooth finish. And you could, if you wanted to, um, cover that with some Mod Podge or some gel medium or something like that. I don't think I'm going to, but you definitely could do that. Okay, so this will be placed like this. 
okay? So our next piece is this little, he's got like a frame with something inside the frame. And so for that, I actually have one of his frames um, and I have already cut the card to go inside of it. But I have this, this is also part of the kit. And I had to cut this down because it was too big. So I just cut it down and um, to the size that I wanted it and re-rounded the edges, glued it back together, re-rounded the edges and put this piece inside, which is one of the journaling cards from the kit. So that is going to be our next piece, and it is going to be approximately in this area. And then, um, if you can see, there is, if I'll quit hitting the button, there is a pocket watch thingy here. And I do not have that pocket watch but I do have one of the monocles or the magnifying glasses. And so I'm going to use that and I'm gonna put it right here over the frog because I thought that was really cute. And that's actually, yeah, that's the right way. So I'm gonna put that over the frog like that. Okay. Um, and then I do need to get, I've got my number. What did I do with it? Here's the number. Um, I chose a 48, but it is that same kind of set that he has. And it looks like he has used, I can't tell if he's used wire in this picture or if he's used thread to do that. Um, I do have wire, oops, I dropped my number. I do have wire, but it's copper. Um, and I'm not sure that that's going to go with what we're doing. So I may use I don't have any silver wire. I don't believe. Um, so I think I'm going to just use like a thread, maybe some embroidery thread. And I think I'm going to use black. So let me reach back here and get that. Actually, I could use, I have some black elastic. Wonder if I could get that in there and get it knotted. That would be handy because then I could just the knot behind or hide the knot behind the uh, elastic. Of course I'm going to be all thumbs now. It's not like I'm not anyway.
Sorry, I'm quiet, guys. I'm concentrating. I can't get my fingers to work. <laughs> I'm trying to tie a knot, and you would think that I'm doing some kind of critical thing here. Oh my goodness. Time to cut the nails. I can't tie a knot. Okay. There we go. And then I think I'm going to also put like a piece of foamy like a, a dimensional foam piece back there behind it just to give it some extra stick. Just so it'll stay in place and not slide up and down. I'm just going to stick it down in there. And then we will take this. And hopefully get it around here. I didn't want to leave it too loose, but I may have gotten it too tight. Come on, little guy. Boy, I bet you didn't know something could be so hard, huh? Is that where I want it? Or do I want it up further? I think I want it up further. What are you hung on? Center it up. Well, who knew that something was going to be so difficult? the most difficult part of the whole thing project getting the stupid number on here All right. 
There we go. That wasn't easy. So now we can, um, I also need like a little, he's got like a little, label there. Sorry, I'm just thinking he's got an arrow. I don't really have a need for an arrow. Um, I wouldn't care to have another little embellishment right there, but an arrow is not going to work in for my project. If I had a a dragonfly, would be cute, but I don't. I might have a dragonfly that's a die cut. Let me get my little box of goodies here and see if I can find us a label to wrap around that corner. Do I want black again? Or do I want that color? I think I want that color. I dumped this box yesterday. I was talking to my granddaughter on the phone and my elbow had it on the corner of my desk and my elbow hit it and everything went everywhere. It took me forever to pick it all up. Green, green, green would be good. Do I have a big green one? There's a green one. Yeah, I think I like the green. Alright. Now, do I have a dragonfly? If I do, it's probably not in here. Whoops. See? I'm knocking stuff out. Okay. So there's that. So let's ink this. It goes around the edge of this. Like that, just for a different, a little accent. So let's put that on. Now let's start gluing some stuff down. So our tag needs to go. I'm looking at my reference photo here. All right, so our tag needs to go more to the side and about right here. I 
make sure when I put that on that's underneath. Sorry if my head got in the camera there. All right, so let's do that. I guess my point, part of my point of doing these is to show you that if you see something on Pinterest that you like, it can be adapted into what you're working on. It doesn't necessarily have to be the same as what you see. You can use the, you know, the basic components and make them work for whatever project you're working on. All right, and then that is gonna go that right there. But I think the main thing in junk journaling is to, you know, try different things and don't get yourself stuck in, you know, every time you make a journal that you're doing the exact same things because, you know, that, that to me is what kind of ruins it. If you get to the point where you know, everything is the same, then I don't feel like you're going to get the enjoyment out of it that you could. Now, granted, I make zipper tags like crazy all the time, but I never make two the same unless somebody requests one, you know, that I've already made that um, they would like to have. I never make the same one twice. I love making zipper tags. Love it. It's probably, you know, one of my favorite projects. But, you know, like I said, I don't make, let me switch those. I don't, I don't usually make the same one more than one time because part of what makes it fun for me is coming up with the different concepts for how those are put together and how they work. I hope that makes some kind of sense. I'm going to trim just a little bit of this white off. There's just a little. This is out of Tim Holtz Field Notes stuff. And I think I am going to go over it. That's not going to do any good. It doesn't have a pad on it. With some antique linen. Just dress outside. Just kind of take that white down a little bit. And you can see that that um, antique linen really dulls it down. But if you kind of wet your finger and go over it, it'll kind of bring it back out where you need it to be. I 
think I'm going to put that right there. Putting, again, black soot around it. I hope you guys can see. I keep thinking I'm on a frame because my camera moved. It's making me panic. It's giving me a little bit of panic. around this. I'm going to put a three-dimensional tape on the back of it because I want it to stand out. Stick up. Whatever you want to call it. Now, let's put on our little magnifying glass so it can be drying for a minute. And I'm going to use Fabri-Tac on it, I believe. Let's see if it works. If not, I'll have to go get my little collage medium to use. While that's drying, I'm going to try to keep this really flat and put this back on. At least for a minute. Oh, surely I can get these through here. little post and hopefully screw them back on. It's kind of hard to reach them. Um, was the only difficulty I had when I was getting them off. If it is, It's kind of hard to get your fingers in there to, to unscrew them. have to wait until I can tip it so I can get a screwdriver back there. Yeah, 
I think that's what I'm gonna have to do because I can't. Can't get it started good enough to to hold it. I got that one pretty good, but I can't get this one over here. Maybe if I turn it this way. Don't you slide, magnifying glass. Stay where you are. There, I got it good enough that we can call it done and then I will go and get the screwdriver. So there we go. Number nine. And like I said, this will be adapted into a cover. Um, I don't know if I will, how I, how, I haven't thought about how I am going to bind it yet. Um, but I think I have enough room you know, to just do a fabric along the edge type binding. Um, but that's to figure out in another project. <laughs> I just wanted to do this one. But I think that's really cute. Of course, it's not as grungy as, as Tim's version, but this journal is not going to be as grungy as what... Um, what I normally do either so um, that's okay I like it I think it's really cute hope you guys enjoyed that and like I said I will be doing a lot of this as much of this on camera as I can there will be some things that um, I will do on the side um, but I think it's going to be really cute. I'm really excited about working with this pack. And I'm really excited to do something that's got these nice, beautiful spring colors. And again, um, it's called The Calligrapher's Garden. And it's by Tavia May Journals on Etsy. So, please check her stuff out. She's got all kinds of beautiful kits. I did a, another project for her. Um, that was a Christmas journal that is available on my YouTube. If you did not see that, you can go back and watch that one. Um, those were beautiful kits as well. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Do we want to put, do we want to put words? I like that, the Garden of Words. Or we could put the calligrapher's garden on there. Hmm. I'll debate that. And we'll, de we'll decide that the next time. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And thanks for watching. And if you're new, welcome. And if you're uh, a previous subscriber, thanks for watching. And thanks for your support, everyone. And we'll be back on Thursday for the Marguerite Miller uh, challenge. And hopefully by then you will have seen two videos. Um, the one that I could not get posted yesterday in this one. So until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you on Thursday. Bye.